What's up guys? Today it's time for a new episode of Gumpla News. I don't do Gumpla News videos regularly anymore just because of how Bandai could announce this stuff. It's very kind of sporadic and it's just hard to make it so that I could do anything like bi-weekly or monthly or anything like that to be able to talk to you guys about news stuff I feel like. But we had the Hobby Next Phase 2023 spring event from Bandai and so we got a bunch of announcements and there's some very interesting stuff to talk about. Now in this video I want to give you guys some of my completely honest opinions about some of this stuff and a couple of caveats to make uh, right off the bat. Bandai hypes up these events. I don't want to say it's too much because you know as a business you know they want to hype up the announcements of their new products because they want people to buy it of course but at the same time the announcements and every time they do these next phase events it's hyped up and then I feel like it's very easy to be disappointed when these announcements actually come out because they'll announce, you know, 30 new products, but it's a very wide range of different products. So you'll have like your new figure eyes Ultraman kits and your new 30 minutes Mr. 30 minutes Mr. 30 minutes missions and 30 minutes sisters uh, kits and you'll have your new Gunpla, which is going to be the thing that most people are going to be excited about, of course. But then you'll have obscure stuff like the imaginary skeleton Mosasaurus kit, for example. So I mean, it's a wide range of stuff. So even though it's 30 new kit announcements, there's maybe three that you really can be excited about. So it's very easy to understand why. I mean, myself included, whenever these announcements come out, I always feel like that was kind of, eh, you know, cool. There's a couple things in there that I'm excited about. For the most part, not really, but I feel like that's kind of how it's going to be for a lot of people. So even though it may sound like I'm being a little bit negative about these, I want you guys to, you know, just keep that in mind. This is all my personal opinion that I'm sharing with you guys on these products in uh, this video, just because these products aren't out. I can't, you know, give you guys an objective review of the kits or products just because they're not out yet. I can just say, you know, here's how I'm feeling about these announcements. So let's get into it. So yeah, we had, like I said, there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm not very interested in, to be honest. There's a new Macross kit. No, it's not for me. There's a new Super Robot Wars kit, although I have really, really enjoyed a few of the HD Super Robot Wars kits so far. I think they're really, really nice. The new one doesn't really appeal to me, but that's also coming out. New Kamen Rider kits. There's a new Kyokai Senki kit coming out, which I feel like is kind of late and uh, I don't know how well it's one's going to do. Uh, just because I feel like even when the series was ongoing and the kits were kind of uh, coming out like in high gear, I don't know how popular the series ever really got to be. And I don't know how popular it is. Maybe it's more popular. Maybe the kits are more popular in Japan, but I feel like they're just not that popular. And now that especially the series is done and kind of we have all the kits and now this one is coming out later, I feel like there's probably not going to be too much hype about this kit, although it does have a really cool design. So I hope that the kit does well and I hope that you guys, uh, those of you who are fans of the design will enjoy that. But I feel like in terms of Bandai releasing that kit now, seems like a lot of the hype has gone for that series in general. We got the new figure eyes amplified Yu-Gi-Oh kit, which I think is a lot, gonna be a lot of people excited about that one as well. Again, it's not something that I'm uh, personally interested in. We also have the Sin Duality series. There's a couple of HG kits, which I just really don't care for those designs. I gotta tell you guys, it is not for me. They look, I mean, I'm sure they're gonna be great kits. They look really nicely detailed. There's a ton of detail on them. It's just not to my taste, that style of detail. Maybe once the kits are out, I'll see some custom builds online and I'll think, oh, that, you know, that's actually kind of cool. But until that point, you know, for me, I'm probably gonna pass on those. There's a new figure eyes standard kit of the character from that Sin Duality series as well. Again, looks nice, but you know, fool me once, fool me twice, that kind of thing. On the figure eyes standard character kits from Bandai, you know, I keep, I'm trying to enjoy them, but my past experience most recent experience with the Witch for Mercury figure eyes standard kits of Suleta and Murin. They're okay, but not that exciting for me. We got some new 30 Minutes Missions and 30 Minutes Sisters announcements. The new 30 Minutes Missions announcement is getting memed pretty hard uh, for the fact that the Alto rides on the cockpit of this kind of larger machine. It's interesting though. I mean, it's an, they're trying interesting things. We've got a new weapon set, a new vehicle set coming out, which does look pretty cool in the 30 Minutes Missions line. New 30 Minutes Missions uh, decals decals in the 30 Minutes Sisters line, as well as a bunch of different 30 Minutes Sisters option parts and a new 30 Minutes Sisters body coming up. Um, that stuff all looks great. If you're into that stuff, you'll like that. I like that stuff. I'm looking forward to building those uh, products. Before we get to the Gumpla though, we do also have some tool announcements. Now here's where I feel like I probably got the biggest laugh out of this announcement because they announced two tools. One is pretty bad and one is 
pretty good, but there's question marks there. So the bad one is the runner stand. This is one single runner stand, and I, I don't even know why they're not selling this in packs of two at least. Uh, but it's one, and it's like three dollars fifty cents. You know, they're not too bad, and you know, that's just a, a few bucks. But it's just like a folded piece of cardboard that holds four runners. It's cheap, and uh, in my opinion, it's just a useless product. You know, you really don't need that for anything. You know, in my opinion, you don't need runner stands. Period. You just don't need it. There's a lot of different runner stand products that exist out there. Uh, I just don't get it. Uh, what I use, I just stand up the runners in the box, the box that you get the kit in, so you don't need to buy anything extra, and that works perfectly fine for me. I build kits, obviously, all, all, a lot. So, yeah, runner stands have always been a, a bit of a question mark for me. I don't really get it, but Bandai now releasing these, and this is the same one that was included with the Master Grade EX um, Strike Freedom Gundam. And again, it's one runner stand that holds four runners for 350. And you know, so you're gonna, for most kits, you would need more than one of these anyway. And so yeah, it's kind of weird. But then we have the organizer box. And the organizer box is something that's really helpful. I use them all the time, as you guys see, like in my live builds and things like that. I love these, but it's also like $18, $20 for this from Bandai, where I'm sure like the nice thing about Bandai's one is that it's specifically tailored for, you know, model tools and supplies and model kit stuff. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's the organizer box that you can get for like four or five dollars from any craft or DIY type of store. So, I mean, yes, it's a great idea to sell this as a box, uh, but something that, you know, I just feel like is very late to the game and, you know, it's kind of all right. But on the other hand, I can understand how if Bandai is wanting to make tools for the hobby, they have to try to think of something that like three or four or five different other companies aren't already making. So it's not like they can come out with a new tweezer product. It's like, oh, okay, everybody makes tweezers. So what are you gonna really do to innovate on the tweezer technology? So as far as like Bandai Spirits tools as a brand and as a department there at Bandai, for them to try to come up with new things that they can sell under their tool brand, I can understand the challenges because you know every there's like, 40 different companies out there making the same, all the same versions of the same tools, basically. So anyway, so they're trying a couple of new things. Ultimately, you know, kind of meh, as far as like the tool uh, announcements. We have the uh, Spinosaurus coming out in the Planosaurus line. I enjoy the first couple of Planosaurus kits, uh, just as like something to do with my kids. I probably won't be getting the Spinosaurus, uh, but it's an interesting line, especially if you want some model kits to build uh, with your children, or you want to just give them as gifts to your children or whatever, if your uh, kids are into dinosaurs, or if you're into dinosaurs maybe, but they're very simple kits. I'm much more interested in the Imaginary Skeleton, so I love the Imaginary Skeleton kits. They're super nice, you know, super detailed detailed and um, just like very scientifically ac accurate, which is cool. Uh, so the T-Rex and the Triceratops were cool. The Mosasaurus now looks awesome. I really like the display for this and kind of the, the, the pose of it looks really cool. So really, really looking forward to that. Honestly, amongst the different announcements, this is probably one of the ones that I'm most excited about, uh, the Mosasaurus. But all that said, guys, all right, so there was a couple of aerial things that we can just very briefly uh, kind of talk about. There was the Robot Spirits uh, Gundam Aerial Rebuild version anime that's coming out. I just don't really like the rebuild design, to be honest with you guys. I don't really like the angular designs of like the backpack and the shoulders, especially. It just doesn't work for me with the design. I just don't think that it fits. Um, so I'm not a fan of the design. I probably won't be even getting the HG version of that, but if you guys are fans, you know, Robot Spirits and the Aerial Rebuild design that's coming out. There's also a P-Bandai version of the Aerial that's coming out, which is the Permet Score 6 version, which basically just looks like a metallic coated version of it. It's got like a kind of metallic a sparkly spray over the whole kit and the clear parts look to be like they're molded and like a, a sparkly injected clear plastic. So. Uh, nothing really too exciting with those. There is a new version of the high mobility ground type uh, Zaku HG kit that's coming out that looks awesome. I love those. Those look awesome. You know, just personally, those look great. Can't wait to check those out. But the new announcements. So we have the announcement of the SDCS Banshee uh, Destroy Mode plus Banshee Norm parts. So this is a SDCS kit of the Banshee, which gives you the parts to make both the regular Banshee and the Banshee Norn, which is awesome. I like this for two reasons. Number one, it shows that the SDCS line is not dead and the SDCS line is great. Really nice uh, SD kits. 
in my opinion, probably the best SD line that's out there. And, you know, it kind of died down quite a bit recently. So people were wondering, eh, is it kind of going away? So at, at the very least, this proves that the SDCS line is not going away. That's great news. People are probably disappointed that it's the Banshee, which is just essentially a you know variant of the Unicorn, of course, and you know a lot of people getting kind of tired of the Unicorn, understandably. But you know the Banshee is an awesome. On the other hand, it's an awesome design. The Banshee Unicorn uh, or just the regular Banshee are awesome designs. So you get all the different armed armor parts uh, for the DE shield, the XE, I believe it is for the backpack parts, uh, the VN BS for the regular Banshee parts for its arms and like the revolving launcher part for the beam magnum. So all this cool new stuff you get there and in the Banshee Banshee slash Banshee Norn colors. So that kit looks awesome. Would it have been nice if it was something you know more new and exciting and not just a variant of the unicorn? Sure, yes, but at least we know now that the line is not dead and the next one's probably gonna be something a bit more uh, new and exciting, I guess. Then up next, we have the full mechanics version of the Forbidden Gundam. So we had the full mechanics Calamity, the full mechanics Raider. It was very you know easy to assume that we were gonna be getting a full mechanics uh, Forbidden Gundam. I think it would have been pretty foolish to think that for any reason that this would have been coming out as an MG. Uh, I've seen some people commenting like, oh, I wish it would have been an MG where like the Calamity and the Raider were full mechanics. So obviously this one's gonna be full mechanics too. It's all about, as I have said before many times, it's all about managing your expectations and you kind of, you know, look at what Bandai's doing, kind of you can expect what's gonna happen here with these. Uh, one thing I will say about that too, though, if you guys saw my review of the Calamity, if you saw my review of the Raider especially, because I thought this was especially true with the Raider, is that it really does blur the line between full mechanics and master grade just because yes it's not a master grade by name but otherwise these kits are so close to basically being master grades at the end of the day i feel like they don't have as quite a complex like full inner frame as what typical modern master grades have but the raider almost did kind of have that just because they had to put a lot of frame into that just for the transformation of it uh, this one's probably going to be more similar to the calamity not as much uh, inner frame in this one but still you know on the outside it has all the surface detail basically of an of a master grade it may not have quite as much part separation of like little parts for like little colors and things like that it may be missing uh, and then otherwise the only real thing that's missing from being like a proper MG is just like that full more detailed inner frame but if you take a look back at what it, what it means to be a master grade it's kind of hard to define because you may think oh, master grade means you know it's detailed has a lot of parts has a full inner frame but even that's not necessarily true go back to like some of the early master grades like 1999 master grades 2009 master grades 2019 master grades they're they vary quite widely when it comes to you know what exactly uh, it means to be a master grade. So a kit like this, like the Forbidden Gundam, it looks awesome. It's probably better, gonna be better than you know at least a third of the master grade line, like the first third of it. So you may be saying like, oh, you know that's you know 20 year old kits. You know to say that it's better than you know a 20 year old kit, you know it's not saying much. But my point is just like saying that you know what it means to be MG quality, you know, that doesn't really mean anything. I think you should look at a kit for how good is that kit specifically, not how good is this kit within other lines or within its line or in any way. So like even within the full mechanics line, comparing like the full mechanics Raider Gundam and the full mechanics uh, Vidar, for example, I mean, like even between those kits, I mean, it's it's different in terms of the overall quality of them, I think. So anyway, this looks great. The transformation looks pretty cool, how the head tucks into the torso. It has the uh, mesh cloth cover parts for the wire connecting to the shield kind of uh, binder parts there. So it looks like it has a, a lot of really cool stuff going on for it. I think it's gonna be an awesome kit. It's definitely one that I'm most looking forward to. That alongside with the other big announcement that of course most people are going to be talking about here is the real great Epion. So we have uh, probably the best looking version of the Epion ever, I would say, uh, just because I always thought the Master Grade looked great and I've always wanted to build the Master Grade, but I've never actually built the Master Grade. And now I probably won't, to be honest, because this real grade, in my opinion, looks even better than the Master Grade. And so uh, I think that's that's saying a lot because that's a really good looking Master Grade kit. And this one, I think, improves on that. The only thing that I think is gonna be a little bit of a disappointment, and not even like a disappointment anyway, if it's anything that you could criticize about this kit, just from what I can see so far, 
is the fact that the heat rod is molded on the uh, inner frame runner or like the injection runner, which would be where you would normally find the inner frame on a lot of RG kits. And a lot of the more recent RG kits, they aren't really using that quite as much. You know, people have their different opinions on that. I don't mind it so much, but I know some people miss that as a gimmick of you know earlier RG kits. Anyway, whatever your thoughts are, it's going to be very similar to the uh, real grade Xeon where the fingers were on that runner. And so like I can tell you from my personal experience, painting the RG Xeon was a challenge because those are like movable parts that you have to paint as it's like all connected. So it can be a bit of a challenge and you're probably going to be facing that same challenge here with this with the heat rod. But other than that, it's a really, really good looking kit. The details, the proportions of it, the color separation. And I think that the color separation on this looks so nice. The two tone, uh, like dark red, just because I think it's done, you know, as usual with the RG kits, it's done in a really, really nice way. That uh, two tone dark red. That and the effect part for the beam saber on it looks amazing. So this kit looks awesome. The transformation is, it's kind of weird. It's a goofy transformation, but you know, if you are a fan of the transformation, then you should be pretty happy with that. It, it looks like they've handled it in a real, in a good way. You know, they've taken a goofy transformation and made it look pretty cool as far as goofy transformations go. So there's not a lot that they can do with that, but I think they really did their best and I think they did a good job on it. It's coming with uh, fixed pose hands as well, which I really like. Again, that's something people have different opinions on whether you like fixed pose hands or not. I do, so I'm really happy to see that. Some people may not be, but anyway, I'm really, really excited for that. So by far the Epion and the Forbidden Gundam are the two announcements that I think I'm most looking forward to. And I think probably a lot of you guys are as well, but there's one more thing we have to talk about. And that is the new side F version of the real grade Sazabi. This is another one uh, that a lot of people are talking about. And this is an exclu exclusive item that's only gonna be sold at the uh, side F facility, which is the uh, Gundam base there in Fukuoka, Japan. Uh, they made the version of the new Gundam that has that big like super funnel on it. So they wanted to make a version of the Sazabi to kind of go along with that. I can understand where they were coming from with the idea, with the concept, but I think that the design of these, of the new equipment here for the Sazabi, it looks so weird. And I think a lot of people are in agreement on this that it's just a really, really weird design. It looks kind of dumb. People are saying that it looks like lobster claws or like a crab, crab claws or like hair curlers. I think that's what it looks the most like a hair straightener, like big massive hair straighteners. Something like that is what it's got. I can understand what they wanted to do, but I don't know why they ended up choosing these designs. It's They look really weird. Honestly, the design of these weapons look like they would fit so much better with the Nightingale, to be honest. So I think if you took, if you bought this kit and you know, gave those weapons to your, just give those weapons to your HG Nightingale, I think that's probably going to be a much, a much better option, uh, in my opinion, and something that would actually work out pretty well. You get some pretty cool and pretty large uh, effect parts for those as well. Uh, it looks like there's a green and a pink effect part, which look to be kind of the same, but slightly different. I'm not sure why that is because as so far based on what I've seen there's no picture showing the pink effect part in use only the green one but the connection for the effect part looks slightly different so I'm not sure how the the pink one's going to be different it looks like it's maybe kind of like the same effect but it's like turned a different way or something I don't know anyway I'm sure there's people out there who who do love the design of these and you know are, are looking forward to it so I, you know if you think that this looks awesome you know by all means I hope you're able to get the kit I hope you enjoy it and you know that that opinion is totally valid I just want to say but you know for me personally and based on from what I've seen from a lot of people even in like uh, Japan and overseas uh, my friend in Korea Songdong uh, Gunpla Lab he did a video on this I know as well and so I know it's something that a lot of people are talking about and it seems like a lot of people have different opinions on this design a lot of people are just kind of scratching their head and thinking like that's a weird design. It just doesn't really fit with the Sazabi very well, I think. And it's unfortunate because the real great Sazabi, in my opinion, is still probably the best RG out there. It's really closely debatable between the new, the high new, the Sazabi and, and others as well. There's a lot of really great options in the RG line. Personally, I would put the Sazabi at the top, but I think you could debate a few other different kits being in that top spot. Great, great, fantastic kit. The new parts, you know, the quality looks great. Uh, I'm sure they're going to be, you know, fine. 
the design is just very strange. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. So that's it for the news and my opinions on the latest announcements from Bandai. Let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you agree or disagree with some of my opinions? Or is there other stuff coming out that I didn't really talk much about or I kind of glazed over or completely omitted? and stuff that you guys are excited about, let me know in the comment section down below. And as always guys, aside from the exclusive items, uh, if there's anything that you're interested in pre-ordering, you can do so at USA Gundam Store. I believe most of the new stuff that was announced is already up for pre-order on the USA Gundam Store site, so the link will be down in the video description below. Pre-ordering it allows you to guarantee that you will get it you know, as soon as it's available. So you know, it's got a release in Japan, come all the way to here to us and then you know it can go out to you guys but then that way you're not waiting for the kit to release and then trying to scramble to buy one before they're sold out uh once they're made available at whatever your preferred retailer is so anyway uh, pre-order those if you're interested and as always guys thank you so much for watching uh liking subscribing if you're so inclined to do so really appreciate all your guys support till next time bye guys